Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. And I'd like to say thank you for being patient with me while I've not uploaded a video. But the truth is, I've, I've been crazy busy. I live here in New Jersey, and we're under a shelter-in-place order in the state, but I own a skincare company, and we've been making hand sanitizer, so we've been very busy. While everybody else is home and isolated, we've been keeping ourselves busy and operational and getting that hand sanitizer out to just as many people as we possibly can. I've been distributing it locally to my postal carriers, some of the local businesses here in town, and they've been distributing it out for free as well. I'm not charging, not a penny for the hand sanitizer. I'm just trying to you know, do my part for my local community. So hopefully this is going to help everybody in the long run. So if you're interested in learning how to make your own hand sanitizer, stay tuned at the end of this video because I'm going to give you the recipe and walk you through all the little details that you might need to make your own. Today we're going to talk about where things are stored on your iPad. You know, there's been some changes with the new iOS update and I figured I would walk everybody through. We get, well, really, this was a request from Pepe, aka Gamer, one of my subscribers. He's like, where, where is all this stuff? Like he called me and I'm walking him through it. He's like, yeah, maybe you could make a video. I was like, that's a good idea, Pepe. So let's go ahead, jump to the overhead camera, and I'm going to talk about where things are stored, where things are secretly stored, how to get rid of things, how to free up some space on your iPad, especially when it comes to LumaFusion, because that does gobble up a lot of gigabytes on your iPad. So let's go ahead and jump into the overhead camera. Being that this video is about how to free up some gigabytes and understanding where everything is stored, let's first head over to settings. And the first thing we want to do is go down to the left hand side, go to general, go over to the right hand side and choose iPad storage. This is going to give you a breakdown of everything that's stored on your iPad, what's gobbling up the majority of your gigabytes. At the very top, it's going to give you a color key showing you where, what's gobbling up your gigabytes, where they are, and you can see right off the bat, Apps is the number one thing for me, and that's because I use a video editor app called LumaFusion. Whenever you're working with videos, that's going to take up a lot of space on your iPad. To the right of this bar, I can see that my device is 128 gigabytes, and I'm using 26 of those gigabytes with all of these different things. Now, look at the different colors. What I want you to pay attention to is this blue line. And if you go down to see what blue is, it's going to say iCloud Drive. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. I purchase iCloud Space every month. Why is any of that actually staying on my iPad? Whatever device that you're uploading to the cloud from, that's still going to be sitting on your iPad. And let's say that I want to retrieve one of those videos from the cloud with a different device that's now going to reside on that iPad or that iOS device. So just be mindful if you're looking to purchase an iPad and you're looking to maybe only get the bare minimum one because you plan on purchasing a nice big cloud space, that doesn't mean that you can only have a 128 gigabyte device and you know, you're planning on keeping two terabytes of stuff worth up in the cloud. It's not gonna happen. It's happened to me. I've plugged an SD card in and it's like, hey, you don't have enough room on this device to even download the stuff on this card. So just be mindful. You know, I actually think it's way worth it. Instead of purchasing cloud space every month, I think it would be worth it if you guys got the device that had a larger amount of gigabytes in it. But that's just me personally. And this gives you a breakdown of everything that's on that iPad and taking up any little bit of storage on your iPad. Uh, I also was asked, okay, now what about photos? I cleared out a lot of photos in hopes of freeing up some room and you know, it's still showing that I have 10 gigabytes worth of photos, what's going on? So let's go into the photos. And uh, here are your photos, okay? Now, if you have cloud space, every photo that you've taken with your phone or iPad, they're all going to be commingled together in your Photos app. No matter what device you've taken them on, there it's going to be. And let's say I deleted a bunch of these out of here. That doesn't necessarily mean they're deleted or deleted permanently. It takes 30 days because the iPad is going to set them aside and say, you know what, she might change her mind. Maybe she's gonna want that picture back of the X that she threw away. What if you wanna just get rid of it right away? You don't want it hanging around that 30 days. What you need to do is go to albums and go down to recently deleted and this is where all of those photos or videos are going to be that you've recently deleted. Well, I don't have any here, but it's normally, I think, edit, and then you choose the ones that you want. And then you can either choose to recover them or to permanently delete them. Let's go ahead and launch LumaFusion. 
Now let's go all the way down to the lower right hand corner, the little question mark in the toggle wheel, and this is going to bring up your preferences menu. So let's say you always film in 24 frames per second and you always use aspect ratio of 16.9. You can set that up right here. This way, every time you go to the task manager and start a new project, it's already going to be there. You just have to title it and start it. Just makes it a little simpler for your workflow. But what I want to do is bring you over to the preferences section. Now I want you to pay attention to this number of project backups to keep. When I installed LumaFusion, I didn't know about this menu. I didn't, I didn't know where it was. I didn't, I didn't know it. This thing was all the way up to, I think it was like three or four. So every project that I was making, it was duplicating it three times. So that is gobbling up an unnecessary amount of gigabytes. I think uh, one. I think one is good. One is good, especially if you're a mindful person and you're paying attention to what you're doing and you're not, whoops, accidentally deleting a project that you're working on. I think one. If you want to be safe, ah, eh, maybe two. But three or four, I, I think that is just, it it's just too many. Now I'd like to bring you over to clean up. You can also tap any of these and this will get LumaFusion to clean up any of these, your temporary files or your unused cache media. But what I want you to do is look down here and go to imported media. This is going to show you exactly how many gigabytes worth of files that you have imported into this LumaFusion. So I'm almost at about eight gigabytes right now. Now, why I say this LumaFusion is because LumaFusion is different across your different devices. If you have LumaFusion on your phone and your iPad, you know, the LumaFusion that's on your iPad is going to be different than the LumaFusion that's on your phone. So if you download a LUT package and you put it on your iPad, that doesn't mean that LUT package is going to be on your iPhone. Let's take a look at some of the other files that are residing on this iPad. And how we do that is by going to the blue file folder. If you've not launched it ever or recently, it may not be in this bar down here. You might have to search for where it is on your iPad, but it just happens to be there for me. And this is how you can get to your media, things that are organized on your iPad. And of course, if you own an iOS device, this entitles you to five gigabytes free of cloud space every single month. And I really think you guys should utilize it. It's free. It is really helpful in your workflow. So I always encourage people to you know, to use their cloud space. But let's say you've not, you're not using your cloud space. What do you have to do? How do you even start a folder? I think that having file folders for each specific thing, it just makes it easier. It's cleaner. It's more organized. Now, if you were to launch this and you were looking at it thinking, well, how do I even start a file? What you'd have to do here is pull this down and that is going to bring this little drop down menu here. The little blue file folder with a plus symbol, you'd hit that. Now you can name your file, whatever it is that you want, and then you hit done, and that is going to create that file with that particular name. But now remember I was talking about LumaFusion and all of those project backups. Let's look there and see what's going on there. So go to On My iPad, and that is going to show you the apps that you have things like videos and photos stored in. So let's go to LumaFusion, and let's go to the project backups. Okay, there they are. There's all the, the project backups. So if you have a lot of project backups, but pay attention, duplicates. If you have duplicates and triplicates and you want to free up some space, delete those. Okay, just get rid of them. You don't need them. If it's in your project manager, it's good. It's okay. Delete it. Now, I say duplicates and triplicates for a very specific reason. Let me back out of this. Even though this says project backups... This is actually your project manager. So let's say if I had three title hacks, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's the, there they are, the backups, and you erased all three of the title hacks. When you go to launch your project manager, that's not going to be there. It's going to be empty. So you want to be mindful. You only want to erase duplicates and triplicates because if you erase everything, you're done. So that's a way that you can free some stuff up. Okay, so once I've explained that, also, if you want to quickly erase things that are in your media window, so let's say, um, let's go to user media, and we go to other app, and let's say that you want to 
quickly erase something out of LumaFusion. Instead of being in LumaFusion and then you tap it and then you hit the garbage can and then you tap the next one and you hit the garbage can, this allows you to choose many things all at once and just mass bulk delete it. But I don't want to actually do that, so let's get rid of that. And then, of course, down to recently deleted. This is going to show you things that you've recently deleted out of those apps. So if you want to completely clear things permanently out of this area too, you can select those. And, oh, I don't know what that is. So let's go ahead and delete that. And that's basically the storage in space. All right, thank you so much for hanging out to the bitter end. Now let's talk about my hand sanitizer recipe. You only need two ingredients. One is aloe vera gel, and the next one is 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. So here's the thing, the aloe vera gel is readily available. You can get it on Amazon, you can get it at your local grocer. The thing that's gonna be hard to get is the 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol, but you might be one of the lucky few that already has it sitting below your bathroom sink. So if that's the case, you can start cranking out hand sanitizer for you, your family, people in your area, because the more people that hand, have the hand sanitizer, the better off we're all going to be. Okay, so let's talk about how to make it. Whenever you're mixing any kind of concoctions or formulations, recipes, skincare products, the first thing you're gonna put in first is the most thick thing. So your aloe vera gel is going to go in first. Then you're gonna add in your isopropyl rubbing alcohol and it's basically one part aloe vera gel to three and a half parts to the isopropyl rubbing alcohol. So let's say that you don't have very much of each ingredient, hardly any at all. Let's work with tablespoons, okay? One tablespoon of aloe vera gel to three and a half tablespoons to the isopropyl rubbing alcohol. In case you don't know what a half a tablespoon is, it's one teaspoon. Okay, so mix that all together until it is a very nice consistency. If you'd like to add a little bit, a dash, a few drops of scent, you may do that as well. I know some people like lemongrass or sage. You wanna put that in there, that's fine. That's gonna help mask the scent of the alcohol. And put it into a bottle that has a top. It's gotta be completely sealed because that isopropyl rubbing alcohol will evaporate very quickly. So you wanna make sure that it's sealed. Gotta be the 70% alcohol. You can't replace that for something. I saw someone who was using the 99% and they wound up causing a lot of chemical burns on people. That's because that's meant to clean surfaces. Like we used to clean the bay floor with that, the vats, once we've mixed something, the stainless steel tables. That's not meant for contact with human skin. Okay, so don't think you're gonna get that and water it down. It, that, that's not the way that it works, okay? You know what 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol is? That's dry gas that you put into your gas tank. That's basically what that is. Look who wanted to make a cameo appearance. This is Ponstache, my little boy here. So thank you so much for watching my video, guys. Thanks for popping by my channel. And please wash your hands, wear your sunblock, wear your mask, don't throw your gloves on the ground. Let's all work together and we can get through this, okay? Thank you very much. Right, Pon? Pon's a good boy. You wanna say hi to the people? Hi, people. You wanna say hi? Say hi to the people. So how handsome you are. Don't boy handsome. <laughs>